the um, the Starbucks across the street over here where the uh, Jack in the Box used to be. They were under construction, and Sally on Wednesday night, you know, we love to teach our kids not only about prayer, but actually put them, put them out there doing it. And so uh, we, we prayer walked the, the Starbucks. We prayed for the, for the construction crew. We prayed for the building. We prayed that they would get through building codes here in Goodlettsville easily and quickly. We prayed for the employees that were going to be working there, for the manager. We prayed that Bible studies would happen there, that people would get saved, that that would just be like, that's our Starbucks. And so that was Wednesday. And then Sunday, we were going to eat at Pancho Villa. Um, and so as we were going in there, Sally realized that I think it was uh, Julia and maybe Bethany or Grace. Uh, Julia and Grace were walking from the car. Well, it was like perfectly, like in the background, perfectly these two girls and there's the Starbucks sign. And Sally's like, oh, I need to take that picture. Yeah, oh yeah, and the clouds burst. Um, I need to take that picture and post it and say, this is, this is, a, you know, this is the Starbucks that we prayed for, that we prayer walked. She put it on Facebook. I mean, like 30 seconds. <laughs> so what did Sally do? Delete, delete. This is the Starbucks that our youth group went and prayer walked because we are claiming this for Christ. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, okay. So here's an aftermath. So Sarah goes to that Starbucks the other day and she tells the manager, oh yeah, my, mom's, my mom brought her youth group over here and they prayer walked this and they really prayed for y'all's success and for business and just the cool things would happen here. And guess what the lady's response was? Y'all are a church, that's awesome. Like every two days we have food that we have to get rid of. If you guys wanna come over and get that food, we'd love to give that food to you every two. Hmm, you catch more flies with honey. <laughs> you know, it's like, so you walk in love and doors are open to you, but when you walk in hate, I hate this, I hate that, I hate this, I hate that. Amen. Um, it's kind of like, uh, our, and I never can, I never can remember the guy's name. Um, he's from England. Graham Cook, thank you. And where he says, somebody comes up and says, I'm your enemy. And he goes, I'm not accepting enemies today. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm, you know, as the church, we only have one enemy. But guess what? Every other person that's walking on the face of the earth that's not saved is our mission field. So even they're not our enemy. They're just an opportunity. So John 13, um, 35 says this. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciple. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They'll know you're Christians by who you're boycotting. They'll know you're Christians by who you're picketing. They'll know you're Christians by who you're destroying here and you're posting this and you're running them and I'm just Let's think, how many times did we see, yeah, Jesus cleared the temple. Jesus stood, stood against evil, but Jesus was a love guy who stood against evil, not a hate guy who stood against evil. Okay, third question. Hopefully you've gotten something out of one of these. Number three, do you believe in miracles? Now wasn't that a slogan about the, uh, the hockey team, the US hockey team when we played Russia and when they're back when there was a Russia, um, if y'all don't remember that. So do you believe in miracles? Because you can sit in our church and, uh, and you could go, ah, okay, yeah, Callie's leg grew last Wednesday night. Pfft, yeah, maybe. Why would she lie about that? Well, I'm getting a kickback from Sarah's ministry money that she's making, and, and this is all on tele. Look, we, we either believe in a miraculous, miracle-working God or we don't. And look, if you, if you struggle with miracles, I understand they're, um, we're, we're, on, we're teaching our youth on, Sunday, on Wednesday nights, we're teaching them about spiritual gifts. And we're teaching them all the spiritual gifts that are listed, not just the ones that some people say are, these are for today and those, were for, those are for yesterday. Okay, if he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he's blessing us, 
then isn't his blessing going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever as it was then? And, and so you, you begin to ask the question, but here's the thing, like in the, in the area of healing, it doesn't always happen like we think it's supposed to happen. It doesn't always happen immediately. Um, I, I was sitting talking to a friend of mine, Rick Neal. Rick uh, and his wife, they attend One Stone Nashville. Rick and his wife are part of the prayer room that they have there, and they've seen some um, incredible things happen there. And uh, Rick was talking to me, and he said, uh, he said, man, yeah, he said, we've seen people get their eyesight back. We've seen some, some really incredible things. Okay, here's the thing that you need to know about Rick legally blind he's sitting there and we're talking about it and and he has a really good he has a really good sense of humor and and uh um one day rick is one of those guys that when he wants to he he has no vision in the center he just has vision on the outside and so when he wants to look at something he kind of has to hold it over here and uh one one day i saw him and he was he was standing like this looking at a tv and the tv literally was right here and uh out of love i said Hey man, you're gonna ruin your eyes, and everybody laughed, and he laughed. But, but look, we we believe in healing, but what if you haven't seen healing complete here, or you haven't seen healing complete there, or or whatever? I I think one of the things that we that I said Wednesday night to our to our students about healing is that sometimes people develop this. It's a technique, and this is how I make God do what I want him to do, and this is the technique. Well, I tried your technique and it doesn't work. Well, it can't be my technique, and it can't be God, therefore you must be doing something wrong. So now you have a person who's in need of healing, and now you also, they're in need of counseling because you just told them it's all your fault. But look up the different times Jesus healed in the scripture. Find two that were alike. Sometimes they had faith, sometimes they were dead. How much faith does a dead person have? Sometimes, sometimes Jesus touched them, sometimes they touched Jesus. Sometimes there was no touching. Sometimes Jesus spit, sometimes Jesus breathed. You know, there's even one time where the healing took a while. It's like, oh, yeah, I can tell. I, oh, yeah, I see a little better. Oh, yeah, okay, there, it's fine. I think, he, I think that we get the smattering of healings in there because Jesus is like, I don't do it the same every time. So there's, there's not a formula. There's, there's just belief. And, um, and so as we were talking, as, as Rick and I were talking, he said, he goes, Mike, every day I pray, God, let today be the day that I get to read your word with my eyes. And he goes, and one day he's going to do it. Sally. One day, God is going to restore her voice. Could it be today? That would be awesome. For any of you who, and most of y'all have stopped saying this, I bet you like the fact your wife can't talk. No, 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 because I'm dense. I need all the signals I can get. So for her to have a full voice would really help me not mess up so much. God's going to heal her. We know that. God's going to completely finish the healing that he started in Oaks. There's nothing he can't do. Uh, one of my favorite Southern Gospel songs was uh, My Name is Lazarus or whatever. And, you know, with the fourth guy, and you'll have to listen to it. It's a great song. John 14, 12, just to prove there is actually a scripture about this. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Now, if you believe that, and, and I'm, this is, this is a, a genuine statement, okay? This is kindness and love. If you believe that that statement that Jesus said to his disciples is only for his disciples, okay. But all the rest of it then is only for his disciples too, and not for us. I believe it's for his, his 12 and everyone who would follow his 12, because he said to teach them everything. Over in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, then Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's already, he's already given them that authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey 
everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus said, look, you're going to do even more things because I'm sending the Holy Spirit. Sally and I were talking about how um, uh, she has a great thing. I won't steal this because one day she'll write about it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. About Mary. Why was it such a big deal to Mary that that wedding go well to the point where she said to her son, they're out of wine, son, do something about it. And then she looked at the helpers and she said, whatever he says, you do. And I was like, Sally, I don't know. Why was that? She goes, she never got a wedding. She didn't get the wedding that every Jewish girl had dreamed of. She, she rode a donkey, you know, into a town and gave birth in a stable. She didn't get the magical wedding. So the wedding was important to her. And then we got to talking about, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary and, and all this other stuff. And I just, it just popped in my mind. And she was impressed, which is why I know it was the Holy Spirit. I said, isn't it cool that the Spirit has effect on the physical? The Holy Spirit had effect on the physical. That's pretty cool. So my three questions, is God the sinner or is he your peripheral? Are you born again or are you born against? And then do you believe in miracles? Uh, we're gonna end, end our time right now and, and uh, go into a time of food and fellowship and, and we're gonna have an awesome time. We aren't gonna roll out tables until you're packed around those tables. Because Christian said, by golly, y'all are gonna fellowship whether you like it or not, no. If you wanna go outside and eat in 90 degrees weather, you can do that, or you can stay in here. But as we end, if you've got, you need healing, you, and it, maybe it's physical, maybe it's emotional, maybe it's, it's financial, whatever it is. Sarah, Sally, myself, there's a bunch of people in here. We would love to pray for you. Dave and Kelly back there in the back. I mean, I'm, you find somebody and grab them and go, would you pray for me? And if they say no, then come get me. Otherwise, I bet you they'll say yes. Because there is power, resurrected power, in Jesus Christ, and we have access to that. So I'm encouraging you today to believe what the Bible says, and that is, that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you loved us so much that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, so that we could have a relationship with you. You're a beautiful creator. You have created so much beauty that we don't even know yet. But we have, we have all eternity to see your handiwork. Jesus, you left the throne room of heaven to come live as a man. You allowed yourself to be mistreated. You allowed yourself to be beaten. You allowed yourself to be crucified because you wanted to redeem us completely. And you knew we could not do it on our own. And you did it for us. You became us so that we could become like you. Thank you. And Holy Spirit, you came to, in, to indwell us. We're not waiting for you to show up. You're here. You're waiting for us to get out of the way. So Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would continue to minister, continue to speak truth to us. Let us know that the still small voice we hear is indeed the voice of truth, the voice of, the, of comfort, the voice of, of, of uh, love the voice of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know that. I pray, Father, that all of us would become more focused on you and your kingdom. And then we know that you're going to take care of the rest. Father God, I pray that people would begin to know what we are for. And we are for people knowing this Jesus who sets men free. And then, Father God, we believe in miracles. Help our unbelief. We have faith. Bless our faith. Grow our faith. These healings that are happening in our midst, we look forward to giving you glory and honor when we see them completed. 
and we say that we absolutely believe 